In this video, we're going to take a look at how we adjust the board outline and add a keepout layer on the board. We're back on our PCB dock page. This is going to be where the layout of the board is, and here's that room that we have all of our parts. There are a couple of initial steps that we're going to perform now in order to set up the top view of the board. In the last video, we did the cross section, that was the stack up, and now we're going to do the outline. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the origin to the lower left corner of the board. Where is the origin? If I scroll with uh, my mouse wheel holding control, I'll zoom out, and now we see here is the origin way down here. It comes up wherever the default was or where it was left the last. We want to move it to the lower um, left corner of the board. That just helps uh, uh, minimize any of the confusion about where the dimensions are referring to. And to do that, we have to go to edit. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to understand why particular menu items are used for particular functions. You just have to remember them. And so you go to edit and you scroll down and here is origin and it says set the origin. So we're going to set it and now we can move that origin anywhere. I want to move it to the lower uh, left corner and I'm going to zoom way in on this lower left corner to make sure I get it right on the lower left corner. And I'm going to click and now our origin is there. And the reason that we had to scroll way in is because of the size of the grid that came up default. Remember, when we were on the schematic, we set the grid for 100 mils because we set up each of the symbols with their pins and terminals on 100 mil spaces. And when we place the, the symbol onto the schematic page, if we uh, connected the wires uh, on 100 mil grids, it made the connections really, really easy. Everybody got connected to each other and they just snapped in place and it was easy to manipulate the parts they, and uh, do the wiring. Well, in the same way, the grid on the layout page is going to be really important for us. So what grid do we use for the layout? Well, it depends on what operations we're trying to perform. In this first step in setting up the top view of the board, we want, to adjust, we want to adjust its outline, the size of the board. The question then is, what size board do we want to use? Unfortunately, the answer is, it depends. And here are a couple guidelines that I use. There are three common sizes for a board that I use. The first is kind of a USB stick size, and that dimension is about three quarters of an inch wide by two or three inches long. If I'm going to build something that has a USB connector on it that's going to plug directly into a USB port, that's a convenient size if I can fit all the components there. The second convenient size is a business card size. A business card is three and a half inches by two inches. If I can fit all the parts comfortably, in three and a half inches by two inches, that's a really convenient size because then the circuit board itself can be used as a business card, quite literally. Use silk screen to add your information on it and you can use your bare board as a business card. The third common size that I use is 3.9 inches by 3.9 inches. Why would I pick some oddball dimension like 3.9 inches? That's because most fab shops say if your board is less than 100 millimeters on a side, then you get a really low price for it. But if your board dimension on any side is greater than 100 millimeters, then they're going to charge you a lot more extra. And 100 millimeters is about 3.93 inches. And so if you keep the board dimension under 3.9 inches on a side, then you'll meet that under 100 millimeter dimension and you'll have a low cost board. So it's important to keep in mind, unless you have a strong, compelling reason, keep your board dimensions less than 3.9 inches. For this particular uh, example board that we're building here, practice board one, with just the simple 555 timer, I think we can do this on a business card size. So we're going to set the board dimension to 3.5 inches by 2 inches. And here's how we do that. We're going to zoom way out to see the whole board as it is, or we can just go to View, Fit the Board, and here it is. We zoom out. Here is the board. And if you watch the cursor and watch on the lower left of the screen, the dimensions of where the cursor is located is shown there. And we go to the origin at 0, 0. When we go to the other corner, we see the dimensions listed here. It's about 5 inches by 4 inches. That's this default size. Now we're going to adjust that dimension. We're literally going to move the edges of the board to meet our 
three and a half inches across and two and a half inches wide. And to do that more easily, we're going to adjust the grid. I'm going to adjust that grid. I'm going to make it a, f a half an inch grid. And that will just make it really easy to adjust the dimensions of the board. And to do that, to access the grid, we're going to type the letter G. That brings up a menu option. And look, we have all of these preset values to use. And of course, if you look at the lower left corner of the screen, that's where it's telling us this is the grid size that came up as default that we've been using, a 5 mil grid. We want to use a or half an inch grid. You don't have that option here. And so we're going to come down here to set the global snap grid. We click that, and now we can type in 500 mils. OK. And if we zoom out a little bit, it's a little hard to see, but we actually have those little blue uh, markings corresponding to the grid at half mil centers. And now we're going to adjust the outline of the board and bring it into 3.5 by 2 inches. And now to adjust the board outline, we're going to change the view. Remember, we can look at those three views by going to 1, 2, and 3. We're going to adjust the board to go to position 1. This is going to be our board planning view. And now in this view, we're going to go to Design and Edit Board Shape. And now we see the little um, handles on the corners. And we're going to adjust the the length to be three and a half inches. So this side, of course, is this is zero, zero. So we're going to grab the end here, and we're just going to move it until we see in the lower left corner, we want it to be three and a half inches wide. And there we are. And then we're going to pull the dimensions down from the top, and we want that to be um, two inches. And so we're going to grab the top handle, and we're just going to drag that down until we see the length, the width of that to be two inches. And so now our board is, if we look at the upper corner here, it's three and a half inches by two inches. This is a business card size, and we've got our origin down here. Now that we've got the board size to be the business card three and a half inches by two inches, the last step is we're going to add an outline layer. This is going to be used by the Fab Shop in literally cutting out this board from the large panel. We want the outline to be literally along the outline of the board. And if we make it 20 mils wide, it will automatically be centered in the around the edge of that board. And that will provide a little keep out region to make sure we don't have metal getting too close to the edge and provide a path for the fab vendor to route out the board. And here's how we do that. We have to change the view so that we're on the, um, the, the board layer. Remember how we do that? We click and bring to focus the board that we're paying attention to. And we type the number 1. That keeps us on the planning view. Number 2 takes us to the actual layout board. Number 3 takes us to that 3D view. It's number 2. This is the layout of the board that we actually want to use. And to create an outline layer, we are literally going to select the uh, uh, keep out layer as the layer of focus. And we're going to add a shape based on the outline of the board. If you notice the very bottom of the board, this is going to be a general navigation pane we use in order to select the layer on which we want to have actions take place. It's the layer of focus. We, we have a, a number of layers available to us. This is different from the viewing layers, which we'll talk about in a later video. This is the layer of focus, the layer in which we want things to happen. If we click over here to the LS, we'll look at the layer set. These are the options that we can select as available layers down here. We want to make sure that we select the keep out layer. This is a special kind of used to be a mechanical layer. Now it's a special defined layer in Altium that is going to have the outline of the board in it that we're going to give to the Fab Shop. And so to bring that up, it's a non-signal layer. So if I have all the layers here, I've got a lot of stuff to browse through. I don't want to see all those. I want to see just the keep out. It's one of the non-signal layers. So I select non-signal layers. Here are the options. And let's see. Oh, here it is. Keep out layer. If I click that, now that becomes my layer of focus. And I can see the color here is the uh, same color as that keep out layer. And it's on this layer that I want to place the outline. And here's how we do that. We come up to Design. And we pull down Board Shape. And this is going to create a primitive, a particular shape, from the board shape itself. So we click create primitive. 
And now it's going to ask us, well, what features do you want to include? It's going to be on the keep out layer. That's the layer that we have on focus right now. So that's great. I want the width to be 20 mils. And that way, my grid is 5 mil grid. And if I use a 20 mil wide keep out, then the 20 mil outline of the keep out will be centered around the edge of the board. I'll have 10 mils on the right side or toward the inside and 10 mils on the outside. If I use 25 mils, for example, then um, it'll be odd shaped. Maybe it'll be 10 on, on one side and 15 on the other. It's going to align to the grid. So 20 keeps us symmetrical. Uh, let's see. And I don't want any of these selected. And I'm, I'm done. I'm going to create a primitive based on the board shape. And it's going to be added on the keep out layer. And I say, OK. And presto, we're there. And if we zoom in, we see, yeah, sure enough, there it is. Now, if we hadn't changed the grid, so we set up the board size, we use a grid of a half an inch. In order to set the, uh, the keep out layer, the outline, we need to have adjusted the grid to be five mils. So again, if we need to adjust the grid, we type the letter G. We have the options. We should have selected five mils. And of course, we see down here, yeah, we had five mils selected. Um, and so we do that before we select the outline. And look, here's the outline. We have um, a 20 mil wide keep out region. It's going to be 10 mils on one side, 10 mils on the other side. And that means we can place components within 10 mils of the edge of the board. And that's good tolerance. The fab vendor will come along with a milling uh, tip and will drill out the board hopefully around the midpoint of the outline. But of course, there's going to be a little bit of uncertainty. And that 10 mils gives us the margin to make sure we don't have anything important closer than 10 mils from the edge. And now we're ready to move on to the next step and set up the design constraints for our layout.